Hello beautiful souls and welcome to this reading today. We are going to be doing a soul purpose type check-in reading today. I have no idea where it's going to go. I was just guided to do this soul purpose reading and see kind of where the energy takes us. But I've also been guided to do a specific kind of opening to this reading and I've just had the most fun reading coming through. I just did a Kali reading for our Patreon community because we've been doing our 30 days of Kali this month and working with the beautiful goddess and I just did this closing reading for our journey it was just so much fun coming through and seeing what was there and how we how we really sit in that space of stepping forward into purpose so as I was doing that I was like I'm gonna do a purpose reading now so the reason I'm doing it a little bit differently is because I wanted to pull out a very specific card and for any of you who have worked with me for quite a while, especially if you've worked with me around work, around business kind of mentoring, or you've done a business program with me or anything like that, you will know this energy. You will know the book. You'll know the, oh, there's a very loud car going past. You'll know the energy that I'm talking about. And this is Cahil Gibran's The Prophet. So the book is called The Prophet and it's by Cahil Gibran. And there was a deck that was created for that. So when we look at the way he speaks of work, and this card says, to love life through labor is to be intimate with life's inmost secret. So what I want to read out is a few of my favorite passages from the chapter that relates to work, that relates to your purpose. So the first part of it says, and what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. It is to build a house with affection even as if your beloved were to dwell in that house. It is to sow the seeds with tenderness and reap the harvest with joy, even as if your beloved were to eat the fruit. It is to charge all things your fashion with the breath of your own spirit and to know that all the blessed dead are standing about you and watching. So that's what the card specifically talks about. That's the phrasing that comes from it. But when you really go into it, it's one, it has one of my favorite quotes ever. So... It's a really cool little book because we have, this is the guidebook. It's not for everyone. It's definitely not a deck for everyone. And then in the guidebook, it actually has the book. So all of the prophet, which is this beautiful little book that you can read. And one of my all-time favorite quotes exists in here. And it said, work is love made visible. I'm just going to see if I can show you that. Work is love made visible. And I remember the first time I ever read The Prophet, I read it in like a day and it just blew my mind. So when we think about soul purpose, that's really what it's about is to do what makes you feel alive, do what is sharing your love, do what is sharing your joy with the world. There's no point in doing something that you don't like, especially if you're moving out of something and stepping into purpose work. You need to make sure you're stepping into something that is truly alive within you. In the reading I just did for the Patreon community, the goddess Lolita came through and she is the goddess of joy and following your bliss and ecstasy and playfulness. But it's all about following what makes you feel alive. That is where this work is love made visible energy can really land. So I just wanted to share that little bit with you at the beginning because sometimes when we do the readings, there's a lot of energy around taking action and blah, blah, blah. But remember that this is the way we take action. We take it through the frequency of love. We take action. If we want to share something with the world, if we want to be in service to the world, which we all are here to be in some capacity, making sure that we are doing it through the expression of love, that we are simply the conduit of love and how that anchors in this world is through our purpose work and that can be in anything you can work anywhere in the world you can do anything you want to do and it doesn't matter if you're currently in a job that you don't even like how can you bring love into it how can you make that work be love made visible and then if you really desire to how can you change your work situation so that you completely just live in a state of bliss when you connect in to that energy. So that was how I wanted to open up the reading. Um, a little bit different to how I would normally do it because we don't normally pick a card to open up the reading. We normally wait for the cards to show us what we need to see. 
but I always follow the guidance and that is what I was told to do. So let's get some extra energy here. What else are we going to be looking at for work is love made visible? That is the phrase that I'm going to anchor into this reading. Work is love made visible. That's going to be the title of this reading as well, because that is what it's about. There's a beautiful line in that book that it says, I'm going to read it out. I'm going to get it. It says, where is, for if you bake bread with indifference, you bake a bit of bread that feeds but half man's hunger. Ooh. That feeds but half man's hunger. We don't want to bake a bit of bread. So <laughs> that line's just in my head now. I could just hear that line ringing. And I know some of you will have heard me read that passage a few times if you work with me with business kind of mentoring stuff because to me that's how we exist in the work that we do is we want to bake the most delicious nourishing beautiful perfectly risen formed loaf of bread <laughs> that feeds the entire world <laughs> sometimes these analogies they don't pan out as well as i'd like them to but we give it a shot okay let's see what else Interesting, that's so funny because I've just pulled the profit card from a different deck. It actually doesn't have that message. I'm, I always read the profit message from this deck because it's a very unique message. I'm just going to pop that on there. And we are also going with okay, beautiful. So what do we need to see about stepping forward into this energy? I'll read the profit separately because I was pull that card out, but I just know that one there needs to be read. So we have the weight. It's not time yet. Things are being woven. And then we've got six of cups, which is looking back in the past. It is, it can be a space of past energies coming forward again. So maybe a long lost dream. This is how it feels definitely for some people. A long lost dream is reawakening within you. Something that you thought could never be done. This is definitely going to resonate with some. It won't resonate for everyone. Something that you have dreamed of your whole life that you thought couldn't be done because of your circumstances, because people have told you it couldn't be done, whatever it might be. Maybe it's your own procrastination. Maybe it's your own self-sabotage that's coming through here. But something that is from your past is wanting to be revisited in terms of your dreams. And there's this like moment to reflect on that, to sit and say, wow, like what if it could be done? Like, what if it actually could be done? What if there's nothing holding me back with that? It's, again, won't resonate for everybody, but will resonate for those who need to hear it. And then things are being woven. So it's really funny because in the previous reading I just did for our Patreon community, it was talking about there were three pause cards, three wait, wait, waiting cards. It's not quite time yet. Take a bit different look like pause and reflect. So I love the fact we've even got weight here. And then we have this six of cups energy, which is really, a, it is a moment of looking back into the past energy, seeing how you could do things differently. It's recalibrating your belief structures and your, the way you're seeing things as a possibility. For me, I really feel like what I'm seeing for a group of people is that what you believed was impossible is so easily possible. You just need to see it through a different lens. So there might be some things you need to sort out. Maybe you also need to do some study. Maybe you need to work on some belief systems. Maybe there are a few little things at play within the universal timing that's just not quite, not quite right yet because you haven't fully envisioned the dream that you want to manifest into your life. So take that as it resonates. And then we have the golden children and it says inner child tenderness innocence rare gifts and then we have death and rebirth so i'm actually feeling a little bit different to the way that the card is coming through with the golden children but what i'm really feeling is the death and rebirth is there's two messages that are coming through is one there's been shadow work going on with inner child wounding so if you have inner child wounding that you have been working through it is time now to close out that cycle it is time to let that be enough let let that be done for now and step forward into what is now for you. Allow yourself to go through the, the rebirth phase now. You don't have to keep staying stuck in the death phase of keep revisiting these old wounds. And I, I love the fact that we do have this six of cups energy, which is very much that it can be childlike innocence as well coming through here. It's like you don't have to keep revisiting the old wounds. You don't have to keep revisiting everything all the time. You revisit it, you deal with it, you move on. 
you close out that chapter, you transmute it, you move on, you don't stay stuck. We're constantly in a phase, in an energy of rebirthing and moving forward in life. So if there is an inner child kind of energy coming in for you, that that might be a little bit uh, limiting beliefs are coming through, old woundings coming through. I'm definitely feeling this for people. It's like you've been telling yourself the same story since you were a child. Maybe you were also told as a child that you couldn't do certain things. And it's time to just disbelieve all that bullshit because it's all just bullshit. You can do, create, be anything you want to be, but you might have to work at it. And I think that's the thing that people forget is you can have, do, be anything you want to do, but you have to work at it. And that is where we get blocked because we have procrastination coming up because we have these setbacks that come forward and we do have self-sabotage and we have all these woundings that play out and we have limiting beliefs and we have all of these things, but that doesn't deny the fact that we can create, be, do anything we want if, if, if we're willing to work for it. If we're willing to shop every day, regardless of how hard shit can be sometimes, because man, it can be hard sometimes to show up. There are times when you will not want to step into your purpose work because life is just too fucking hard. But can you choose to be the expression of love? Can you choose to be the conduit of love and really allow yourself to be present for what needs to be shared with the world? So again, not for everyone. The other message that's coming through that is the gifts. So this little, little tiny bit down there that I fell into, as soon as I saw that, I was like, it's time for you to revisit your gifts and allow yourself to collapse any beliefs you have around your gifts, around your abilities, whatever you want to call them, step into your birthright. So whatever that is, this doesn't mean just spiritual gifts. This is your gifts as a human as well. So how you create in the world, that, that is a gift. Artists are gifted. Writers are gifted, right? Everybody has a gift. No matter what your gift is, whether it's spiritual gift, which I think kind of gets a bigger, a bigger praise than other gifts. I think actually for me, my spiritual gifts are easier to work with than the other thing that I care about more than anything in the world, which is writing. <laughs> That's harder for me, but it's a gift that I have to work at and it's something that I have to cultivate and it's something that I have to, I'm constantly trying to become a better writer. And so when you look at your gifts, can you allow yourself to let go of all the bullshit energy that you hold from the past? Like I was told that no one would ever read my novel. So I burnt my first novel. Like that's literally what I did because someone that I thought was, you know, good for me. This is when I was much, 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 much younger. Someone that I thought was actually doing it for my best interest was not actually doing it for my best interest, but told me to burn my first novel. And I did. And I'd handwritten my first novel. So when you have these things, that blocked me for years to continue writing. So can you allow yourself to even think of those things that you have a gift in to share with the world? For me to step up and do readings was hard because I'd been told it was weird. It was crazy. It was silly. It was anything. And all I wanted to do is be a professional Oracle tarot reader for years and years and years. And I remember when I got my first deck and I was like, I'm going to do readings. And people thought I was bonkers, like absolutely batshit crazy. And I didn't do it for many, many years because of that. So when you look at that, what needs to close out? What chapters, what cycles need to close out? Because there's a lot. There is a lot of like BS energy that is ready to close out right now. We're not playing these games anymore. We're not playing the, this victim old kind of bullshit energy anymore. It is time to move beyond that. That is what this eclipse is showing us. Can you move beyond that? We are stepping into a whole new cycle of energy. We've closed out the last six months. We're stepping into a seven month cycle right now with the full moon and eclipse. It's going to be even like it's going to be the catalyst kind of energy. Can you accept that all of this is just old, outdated energy that you don't need to have any part of anymore if you don't want to? Revisit the old dreams and say, well, what if, what if I could actually do that? What if I could do anything I've ever dreamed of? And we have the prophet. And it's like my brain, no matter how many times I read this card, I can never remember it. But I always remember that... The card message, which I would normally take as the prophet, is never 
it's not what the, the card means. So <laughs> I always just read this card. All unfolds in perfect time and all you need to know is revealed at the most perfect moment. Be patient and trust for forces are at work in your life right now. Feel the presence of the goddess within you. Ask her to clear your mind so that you may hear her guidance within your heart. The goddess speaks through feelings that stir within you. Feel her pull your heartstrings as she bathes you in her healing light. You will receive a sudden inspiration when you least expect it, and this will lead to a most positive outcome. Be prepared for a pleasant change. I love that. I love it every time I read it, and yet I forget it every single time. Because the prophet to me is a slightly different energy to when we look at the archetypal energies, the prophet, the oracle, the mystic, the medicine woman, the priestess, they all have a slightly different energy. And the prophet is very much about speaking truth. That's how I would see the prophet's energy as an archetypal energy. And yet the card is something completely different. So a little segue there, a little side story. Okay. What messages do we need to see here now? Okay. What else are we going with here? Let's take one of these. Okay, so the first card we have here is Nine of Water, which is Nine of Cups. And this is fulfillment, dreams being fulfilled. And it's this celebration moment of the accomplishment of what you've been working towards. But then we have the Air Guardian coming through, which talks about shifting your perspective. So maybe to achieve the Nine of Cups, you need to actually shift your perspective. You need to change the way you're seeing a situation. Think about as well, when we think about abundance, when we think about manifesting, when we think about goals being achieved, people focus on the one big thing. And it's like, if that one big thing has been achieved, then I haven't achieved anything. Think about the small daily accomplishments, the small like moments of gratitude that accumulate to this nine of water. That can be a shift in perspective, perception that you need to make as well is the way you're actually seeing how everything is manifesting in the most perfect way. It may not be exactly what you thought it would be, but it's manifesting for your highest and best good always. And also just to remind yourself that it's those small incremental little moments. Someone always used to say to me about compounding joy. And it's compounding joy. That's what this is about. This nine of cups to me, the energy that I'm feeling with this is remember the small moments focus on those tiny moments that are moving you forward it's not always about the big goals that we achieve it's about the small moments that lead us to those bigger goals it's the journey not the destination right once you achieve that big goal like what is there what's next or is it's that journey going through it's not about where you get to it's about who you become on the path remember that and we compound these moments we compound our gratitude, we compound our joy, we compound our love, we also compound our fears, we compound our anxiety. So which one are you compounding? Which one are you giving more energy to? Are you in resentment because your nine of cups hasn't happened yet, because you haven't achieved everything you desire, because work hasn't quite turned out because we are doing sole purpose here? Then maybe you haven't quite got to where you want to be. And shift your perception. Have you achieved something? Have you achieved the goals that you just didn't even think were possible when you first started? Maybe you've been in your business for about a year and I love this saying is that people under, so that, sorry, they overestimate what they can do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in five. And it's from Tony Robbins. And I always try to say that to people who are doing sole purpose work, like don't give up just because in a year you haven't achieved what you thought you would, because most people don't, because it takes time to build the foundations. It takes time to build the sustainability of a business. It takes time to get the new skills you might need, like everything takes time to build. So like, are you focusing on that you haven't achieved that big goal or are you focusing on those small, tiny little accomplishments? I posted up today, 
depends on when, when I load this reading, but I posted up today on my Instagram stories and I just said, I'm just today, I'm just, I'm choosing joy. I'm just choosing to see like today is just a day for joy. And I had a beautiful rose delivered to my doorstep and a beautiful sunshiny yellow rose. I'm just going to show you that. I don't know if you could really see it very well because the vase is so big, but Someone literally delivered that to my doorstep today. And I was like, wow, what a moment of joy. And it smells, literally smells like heaven. I can't even explain the smell of that rose. It's just, it's joyful. It's sunshiny. It's playful. It's beautiful and fragrant. And it's sitting on my altar as I'm doing readings all day today. Like, how can you not have joy when we look at things like that? So how can you find moments to top yourself up with that joy? And then we have strength. So again, to get to where you want to get to. I don't know if I spoke about this in this reading. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm sure I did. I definitely know I've spoken about it in, I know I spoke about it in the Kali one I just did as well. But to get to where you want to be, it requires perseverance. It requires resilience. It requires strength. So are you focused on all the setbacks or are you allowing the setbacks to create a resilience and a strength within you that is unshakable? That is your higher truth. That is leading you to what you truly desire. Like this is an energy for me of... It's like finding that inner fire, finding that inner warrior spirit that is resilient, that is so focused on the outcome, so focused on these moments that yes, there will always be moments that get in the way. There will always be pitfalls. There will always be bumps along the way. That is just part of the journey. And think of how much that changes you. Think about who you become on the journey. This year for me has taught me resilience more than any other year ever has. I'm more resilient now than I've ever been in my entire life. That has taught me strength. This year has taught me just how strong I actually am. And in that, I appreciate all of the death and rebirth. I appreciate all the tower moments. I appreciate all the, the ebbs and flows in the journey because this, and I said this in the new moon ceremony to the group who tuned in, I said, that there makes you unfuckwithable. And I think I even said that in someone's reading, personal reading today. So it's just a theme right now. We're in an eclipse energy it's fiery and this energy is fiery. We are in a fiery season right now in the sense of energy. I don't care about the, the astrology of it. I just care about the energy of it. We are in an energy right now that is asking you to step up and be the warrior of your life, to step up and be the leader of your life. When you have that, when you are in your solar plexus warrior fire energy and you have this strength within you, you have this resilience within you, you are unfuckwithable. That is who you need to become to create the life that you desire. And then on the flip side of that is to be open for vulnerability, to be open and receptive and loving and compassionate. So you can exist in both at the same time, but strength is required. Tenacity is required to build a life that is your sole purpose focused that is creating the, the life that you dream of, especially when it comes to kind of business work, because that's really what the energy was focusing on today. Like that's what you need. You need resilience. Anyone who starts a business and fails, I always just look at that and just think, okay, where's the resilience? Where's that energy within to say, I'm going to fight for this no matter what? Knowing you can pivot, you can change, you can move. But if you want that dream, that goal, make it happen. Make it happen. And you are the only person who can make your dreams happen. No one else is doing that for you. No one else is handing you that silver platter. And maybe they do. And maybe you won't appreciate it quite as much. The person who you become on the journey is more important than anything else. So if someone hands you everything on a silver platter, are you going to appreciate it? Are you going to change energetically? Or... Other trials, the challenge is going to actually help you change and grow more, creating a more loving, resilient version of you who is here to be a conduit of love, who is here to say that I 
step into the energy of work is love made visible. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Only you do. I'm doing a very reflective reading today. <laughs> oh, sometimes it's funny. Okay, so we have the Seven Star Sisters, Birthing Creations, Tapestry of Life, Expression, Follow Your Bliss. You are weaving. You are every single thought, every single decision you make is weaving your life. It is creating the tapestry of your life. What fibers, what fabric, what colors are you weaving? What creations are you birthing? And birthing only ever happens in the void in that liminal space, that where, that's where birth, the seeds are created. It's where everything is woven. It's where everything begins. And then we have this energy of the snake. <laughs> that came out very funny because I now I'm thinking about it. And if you know what I'm talking about, there's a video from a guy on YouTube that says, I'm a snake. And he does not say it like that. Anyway. And now it's all I can hear in my mind. I've got to shake it off. So, snake, shedding old skin. Allowing yourself to let go of anything that isn't valuable in creating the life that you desire. If you want to create a life of meaning, something that you're passionate about, then you've got to let go of all the old identities, all the old bullshit stories, all of the old outdated programming conditioning that you are still holding on to that is preventing you from stepping into your soul purpose. I cannot say it enough. It is the number one thing we have to do and it takes time. And it also takes a concerted, like an effort, concerted effort to say, I want to, I choose to release the old identities. I make the choice to shed that limiting belief. That doesn't happen for you. Again, it is a choice you make to do your shadow work, to do your wound work, to do your reconditioning of your mind, to break those limiting beliefs. That takes work. That takes tenacity. That takes a desire to be a better person. And do you know why people don't do it? It's because it's too fucking hard, right? So if you are doing the inner work, well done, because you have stepped up and said, even though it's hard, I'm going to do it. Because a lot of people will stay stuck in this identity, this old identity, their whole lives, they'll never move forward, they'll never make changes and we know them in our lives and that's where they'll stay stuck and that's okay, that's their story. But do you want to be in that? If you're watching this tarot reading, this oracle reading, then no, you don't because most people who are watching these kind of readings do want to make changes in their life but maybe you just don't know how to. Maybe you're stuck in the old ways because you don't actually know the steps forward that's okay. Get support. Find the steps forward. Move out of the energy that you're in. If you can't shed that old skin, you are going to create a new reality with that old identity. You can't move into a new energy with your old identity. You just can't. You can't move into a new life with old limiting beliefs. You've got to let it all go. And this season we're in right now, this new moon eclipse season that we have like stepped into this new beginning, we've closed out those six months. We are being called to step into our most authentic truth the most authentic version of self. There is no more time to be stuck in these old patterns. Like we're not fucking about. Like step forward into who it is you truly want to be without the limitations, without people's judgment. Who cares if people judge you, right? And this is something that I still work on. And I say that, right? Who cares if people judge, who, who cares if people judge you? But it's still something that we will constantly face because we've been conditioned by it, but you can see it. You can be aware of it. You can choose to collapse those thoughts, to change those beliefs. And you can choose to say, do you know what? No one, no one has a right to tell me who I am, what I do. Cause I'm fuck unfuck withable, right? Stepping into that energy of strength. When you are unfuck withable, I love that word, by the way, just that's my new favorite word at the moment because <laughs> that's the energy I'm stepping into. I've been working on that for the past few weeks, that you become unfuck with right? Could you imagine how much your life would change if you can step into that energy with grace, not in a negative energy, not with your old wounds showing up. There is no wound attachment when you're in that energy. You have been through the fires. You have wielded that sword. You have slayed all of your own inner demons and you step into a new energy that says, do you know what? I am worthy just as I am. 
and I believe in myself. I have faith in myself. I know what I'm doing. I know who I am. I know what my authentic truth is. No one can tell me what my truth is but me, right? And that is your discernment and that is your soul's journey. When you step into that energy, there is grace that is attached to that. There is compassion and empathy that is attached to that for everybody else where they're at. And this isn't being above or below energetically because I don't believe in that either. So don't take it as that. Take it as you are rising yourself. It doesn't matter about anybody else and where they're at in their journey, but you yourself are rising into your true, most authentic version of you without the old identity attached. That's a big message. <laughs> and then we have Queen of Wands. Woohoo! Queen of Wands, baby! How cool is that card? Queen of Wands is amazing. She's just. <sighs> to me, I see the Queen of Wands. There's a couple of the couple of ways I look at the Queen of Wands, but I'll only bring one of them forward because one of them is very much more connected to soul connections and divine partnership, but in a soul purpose reading. This is what we're doing today, soul purpose work. So in a soul purpose reading, to me, she is the she is the master. She is the conduit of her inspiration. She is a master of her inspired ideas. She takes her inspired ideas and does take action on them. She knows how to utilize that energy and move forward. So stepping into that energy, could you imagine if you stepped into the Queen of Wands energy, how much that would change your life? She is there to guide you to say yes, say yes to your life, say yes to what it is you desire, say yes to your life, don't allow anybody else to tell you what to do. There's determination in her, she's creative, she's playful, and she has a resilience and strength about her as well. Love the Queen of Wands. Love, love, love. Okay, cool. Now, we're just going to get a couple final messages here because I didn't want this to be a long reading today. What else do we need to see about our soul purpose work right now? What else do we need to be seeing? I've got a song playing in my head right now, but I'm not actually going to share it because... It's a strange one. And people probably think I'm crazy if I share that song. Ooh. I keep hearing it though. <laughs> I will share it. It is a song from, and I've played it once a little while ago in one of my ceremonies. And it was there and I was like, this is the most random song. And I knew every word. And I hadn't heard it since, I think it was 1996 that this song came out. And I hadn't heard it since then but I knew every word and it's from the Olympics by Celine Dion <laughs> and it is um, the power of a dream. So go and listen to that. If you feel like it, if you feel like you want to like listen to a song, that's a little bit inspiring to that you can achieve anything. Cause it was an Olympic song and the Olympic songs are always, you can do the impossible, like live the impossible dream. That is always what the Olympic songs are all about. And that particular song is, it's the power of the dream. Feel the flame forever burn. Okay, so we have, I have to read this card out because I have no idea what it means. These cards are a little bit different. And it says, all afar is all ahead. And I love the poetic little take on these. The vanishing point need not belie one's vanity. One might lose sight of a goal. Let the current drift and leave them squinting at bent horizons. Yet even a blotted out dot creates a line between one's then and now. Ooh. And what we may feel like hopeless mystery is brimming with potential. All that is afar is all that is ahead. We were born to reach the star and the rest is in your head. How good is that card for today's reading? Holy shit. That is an amazing card. We were born to reach the star and the rest is in your head. Because it is, it's all just the limiting beliefs bullshit that we've been talking about. Wowzers. That is a beautiful, beautiful card.
And I'm going to be reading the Magdalene card as well because this one is also a poetic card. So there is a, they, very few of these cards have these poetry kind of writings, but this one does. So I'm going to read the, the writing. <sighs> and I love this card. It says, and if you know much about the Magdalene energy, it is about being a fearless, fearless in your own right, fearless being true to who you are. So this is really what this energy, the Magdalene energy is all about. And it says, go forth and be true to yourself. Dare to be different, to make mistakes. Create, for it is in creation that you exist. In a world full of dreams that stem from your heart. In oneness, love and hatred. Wonder and awe, softness and pain, joy and light. In the stillness, the unknown awaits. Avoid wanting to be filled. Step into it with courage and strength, like a budding rose reaching for the light. Love will lead you to greener pastures. Keep your pockets full of dreams. <laughs> For life is a test of faith. Allow your light to shine. There is no beginning or end. There is only love. Work is love made visible. <laughs> that to me is just the best final card. Create, make mistakes, step into your life with courage and strength. Let love lead you. And remember, come back to that first card that we spoke about, the prophet card, which is that work is love made visible. And everything else is just the space between. From where you are to where you want to be, it's all just the journey. And the more we can infuse it with love, the better our lives will be, the better the lives of the people we impact will be. Everything that stems from that energy is always, always going to serve a higher purpose. So I love those two cards as the final two cards. Like that could not be better. So I'm going to leave you guys there. I hope this reading resonates. I know it's going to be a little bit challenging for some, but always with those challenges, with those triggers, with those little nudges, they're just nudging you forward to take action on your life. And if you need support with that, reach out. If you don't know how to start your business that you desire to create, reach out. Book a session with me because that is what I specialize in. I can see people's soul purpose. I can tap into the way to create that soul purpose so easily. And then it's up to the person to take action. I can't be in, you know, in control of if the person takes action or not, but I can always show and guide what is the best step forward for you to step into your soul purpose work because it's one of my my specialties of working with the energy and I love it something that I live and breathe every day. I love working with soul purpose work because I truly believe that if you're not doing what you love, then what are you doing? <laughs> like, honestly, if you're not doing what you love, then what the fuck are you doing? Do what you love, do it with grace, give everything you've got to it, allow it to make you res resilient, allow it to transform your life, to step into your most authentic truth, the most authentic version of you and everything else is just BS. Much love, beautiful souls.